was all on the Supervisor of ECA, ECA officials, he's a little door. Appreciate it. I don't know what you're like in the class. It's a little bit of my part. And it's a little bit of my part. Hockey fans of all ages, this is Rockland Ice Rink, normally home of the Bay State Breakers. Today, it plays host to a special charity event. It's the annual, the eighth annual, Hug Foundation Ice Huggers versus Boston Bruins alumni game. For the eighth year, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partners today, Alex Wish, Isaac Witt. We're in the penalty box here at ice level, taking in this game from a vantage point no one's ever seen before. Guys, 
beautiful vantage point for today's game. It's one of the best vantage points I've ever had commentating a hockey game. I would say so as well. Hopefully we don't get too many penalties today. They get crowded in here. The Ice Huggers wearing yellow jerseys. The Boston Bruins in their black and gold with the old spoke to be on the front. Love it. It's quite an honor to commentate one of these games. To have to uh, call one of these greats on the skates tonight. Well, the big draw just made a good defensive poke in the Bruins defensive zone. That would be number 77, Ray Bork. Here's the Ice Huggers in on shot. And a rebound opportunity in an Oh, good opportunity. Good opportunity by the hug. Here comes Bork. He drops off. Now it is Leahy. Leahy into the far corner. Pass didn't connect. The Ice Huggers take over. Tim Sweeney in the corner. Pat Leahy comes up with the turnover in the neutral zone. Rebound two into the offensive zone. To Tommy the Bonner song in that shot. Uh, just wide. Just wide. Pretty good shot. Didn't get all of that. Doug Smith, the inspiration for the classic movie Goon. Frank Simonetti, now it's Billy Jaffe. Never seen Billy Jaffe on skates, but uh, so far he's looking pretty good. Oh, there's a goal. It was tipped in front by Bruce Crowder and the Bruins. Quick stop early, just a short two minutes into half number one. Give that assist to Billy Jaffe right there. He, got, he was on the assist. Billy Jaffe, normally the analyst, the studio analyst for Nesson's pre and post game broadcast. Also did. Uh, Hockey East color. Means the game is still in his head. Being an alumni, you get a little bit more artistic liberty liberties with the game. <laughs> trying to make this place feel like the TD Garden. I give him credit for trying. Long time PA announcer for the Bruins alumni, John Harrigan. There's a puck throw in there, covered up. Simonetti and Jaffe were pounding away at it, but the goalie made the freeze for the faceoff. 21 53 to go in the first half. Two 25 minute halves today. Now, Matt, can I act as a fan? Can I bang on the glass a little bit? We'd rather you didn't, but I'm not going to say anything if Ray Bork goes by. And <laughs> Bork standing about five feet from us. We are already in the penalty line. box, technically, Matthew. Just crowded. Ray, Ray Bork, his shot. Oh, what a rough weak. save on the rebound attempt. Weak shot there, but uh, it was like a little curve on it. Long saucer pass. Some familiar names playing for the Ice Huggers by virtue of the, the good old one-day trade. Those would be Ted Donato, father of former Bruin, current Minnesota Wild, uh, Ryan Donato. Dan Lacator is, ran his fifth Boston Marathon last April. He's going for number six this year. Dave Russo and Doug Smith. Mike Motto also on the list from, originally from Avon, Massachusetts, then Quincy. Ice Huggers right now can't really uh, set up anything good. Russo getting assaulted in the corner by Ray Bork. Oh, it's ugly. Bork is slashing away at the legs of Russo. Oh, he's making him look silly. Now Russo's chasing Bork. Oh, and he gets uh, in the way of Bill on, Bennett. They're picking on Russo right now. Russo's going to be about five foot six, and he's just going at all the big guys. <laughs> Pretty good. Takes no prisoner. See, he looks like a little tough guy. 
shoe bottom. Goes all the way across to Simonetti. Nifty is on the ice. We should all know Nifty is on the ice. Couple of good opportunities there for the Bruins. And now Glenn Featherstone comes up with a defensive poke. And now Bruce Shoebottom like, on a break. Here comes Shoebottom. His shot and a save. Right off the face mask. Ouch. Ouchie. Wow. Ouch, Kibibble. He's got an open lane. Oh, wow. Excellent shot. Low post. On the stick side, and the Ice Huggers are on the board. One goal apiece. And that was their one opportunity right there to score, and they took advantage of it. Good goal by Sylvester. <laughs> Dean Sylvester. This is the one charity game of the year they have. They can't hold anything back, you know? Only the right on the ice today. Looking to answer. 18.45 left in the first half. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a loud ring off the post. Good setup right there by the Ice Huggers. Here comes Sweeney. His backhanded shot goes on. to do backhand, of course. Backhand uh, most of the time doesn't work. There's a three on O for the Ice Huggers. They're playing with the Machado. What Pesci. a save! Oh, did he and score? That's a goal. Wow. Didn't even see it go in, but that was a nice try. Nice, nice try at the save. Nice huggers playing like they're on Diving a mission. Diving back across the crease was Dumart, and he just couldn't get there in time. Something tells me it's early in this game, but the Bruins are going to heat it up a little bit. We shall see. Wilkinson with the go-ahead goal for the Ice Huggers. Over to Bork. That's clearly offside. off in the Bruins offensive zone. If I'm Raymond Bork, I'd take a slap shot right here. Oh. For the post on the near side, the tip in. He didn't, didn't want to wind up there. He didn't want to hurt anybody. But if he wound up right there, it would have been a goal. Some people would have got out of the way. Bork skating with a beat under his bonnet today. Wow, look at him move. That is beautiful. Still got it. Yeah, he still has it. Mike Motto going against Ray Bork. Good zone time right here by the Bruins alumni. Let's see if they can get one goal back. Bork shot, it's loose. And it's knocked away to the near side corner. And it's outside the zone, they'll have to set up again. Good keep at the line now. Bork across to. Wow. And a goal for the Bruins alumni. A rip from One the through. high slot. That was Brennan. So the Bruins alumni strike back in a good fashion. Rich Brennan with the equalizer. Billy Jaffe right in front of us, back on the ice. Let's see if he can set up another good goal. Russo back on the ice. Let's see if he gets picked on again. You can always tell which one's Steve Russo because he's the only one wearing sweatpants. <laughs> I was hoping he was going to skate around with a scally cap on. Woo! That would have been nice, but can't take any chance to flip a hockey puck on the ice. Featherstone's picking on Russo. He said, come and get me, buddy. <laughs> Featherstone in the slot, a shot and a goal. Glenn Featherstone ripping it top shelf. There's the Bruins goal. Goal horn. Featherstone oh. just ripping it. Oh. 
nothing oh. you can do with oh. that one. I mean, I mean, if I were to pick on Mike Caruso, I mean, his defense is terrible. I tell you, they've already scored as many points as the LA Rams did in the Super Bowl. Shot sticked away by Dumar. Four on three. Now back to even as the ice archers have caught up with themselves. Rick Middleton on the ice, the yep. newest member of the Rafter Club at the TV Garden. Yep. This is true, Matt. This is true. Hasn't done much in this game so far. But we'll, uh, hopefully that will change. Defensive takeaway on the missed dump pass for the Ice Huggers. 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half. The keys to the game. Brought to you by me, Mad Dog Matt Nelson. <laughs> Key number one, score more goals than the other team. Key number two, constant forechecking. You know what's better than forechecking? Scoring. Scoring, love it. Key number three, sharpen your skates because man is it a sheet of ice out there. It's almost like they're skating on ice, Matt. Someone lost a twig. Dave Shaw tried to pick up uh, Bill Bennett's stick, and that was a miraculous fail right at the red line. Here comes Bennett. Oh, and a whiff. Swing whiff and a miss. Here comes timer. Nifty. And sticked away. Mike Model, take it out. Gentelli has made a couple of very good saves in net for the Ice Huggers today. Oh, there's a goal. Wow. Right through five hole. Back and forth. This is uh, one of the best alumni games I've seen by the opponent keeping up with their alumni association. It's not if the Bruins will flip the switch. It's when. It's when. <laughs> they haven't flipped it yet. But uh, I say next period they do. Next period they, they pick it up a bit. Oh, here comes Swoop. Bob Sweeney in, cross crease pass, doesn't connect with Leahy. Mike Motto will bring it out. Wilkinson going against Raymond Ford on the left side of the ice. Oh, and they'll cover. Close call. Goalie's one of the six guys on the ice he can pass. He did there. You know it's better than passing? Scoring. scoring. There's been a lot of scoring so far today. Six total goals, three for each side. I think the final score will be, gentlemen. 28 to three. Well, we're at threes right now. So you, you're you partially you right. One of these teams is not gonna score. One of these are, yeah, the, the rest of the game, the Bruins are gonna turn it on and score, you know, 25 more points. It's possible, yeah. They're gonna score 25 more goals. Let's see how it goes for them. So you're saying there's a chance. There's always a chance. The ref, Don Garcia, standing right in front of us in the penalty box here. Down in front. Down in front. 
He's in the zone, he can't hear you. Billy Jaffer now. I tell you, he makes a better door than a window. <laughs> That's true. Billy oh, score. Billy Jaffer with two assists today already. And here we go. Only 24 more points to go for the Bruins if they're going to score 28. I think they cover the spread. Big spread, but let's see if they can cover. Bruins alumni minus 1,000 favorites for today's game. It means you got to bet $1,000 to win $1. <laughs> Bill Jaffe now to the Billy Jaffe brings a puck, passes it. Billy Jaffe today is just setting up some good passes. And Jaffe knocks it off the post, and it wound up under Gentilly, and he was able to cover for the save. What an opportunity for Billy Jaffe. Billy Jaffe, uh, he's in the mix. Fielding cleanly. He's got the game in his head still. He is, he is in the mix today. He's already got two assists. He's looking for a goal now. Dave Shaw. Shaw, D to D over to Simonetti. Oh, okay, here's a breakaway. Away, and he's quick enough. Dan Lacatour. Lacatour, shot. And a goal. Oh, wow. Lacatour a top shot. There goes my score prediction. Top shelf where Mama keeps the gluten-free cookies. Dave Russo was in the crease on that one as well. Russo in the face-off. Oh, he's just, they're just picking on him. I give him credit, he's being aggressive. Constantly picking on him. Billy Jaffe has taken in a lot of hockey the last three days. Two games at the Garden on Friday. Hockey's championship game last night at the Garden. And now Ray Bork and Russo are going at it. Busy weekend for Billy Jaffe. Jaffe and Gretzky's office behind the net. Mullen. Can't put it home, and a rebound opportunity. It's still loose. And Tilly goes to the end boards, and the Ice Huggers finally able to clear it into the neutral zone. They need a change, and they're going to get a couple guys off. They get Russo off. Russo is done. Bruins change out. Six and a half to go in the first half, all knotted up at four. Bruce Shoebottom, known troublemaker. He is the record holder for penalty minutes in the AHL, the American Hockey League. It's that here. Excellent shot and passing there by the Ice Huggers, and they take a 5-4 lead with 5.56 left to go in the first half. So, yeah, I don't know if uh, the Bruins have turned it on yet, but uh, this is uh, surprising. Well, a former pro scored that goal, Mike Mono, bigger award winner from Avon. They got a couple pros on their team, you know, so it's, it's not competitive, but it's when you look at competitive. it, competitive. The Ice Huggers have four former professional ice hockey players. The Bruins have about 30 of them. Oh, sir, that's a penalty. He'll be going to the box. Oh, Shoe Bottom's going to go after Garcia and look for an explanation on. And it's going to be a penalty shot for Paul Fitzgerald. He's laughing as he goes to the box. <laughs> I mean, 
he couldn't even go to the box. Shoebottom just got about 45 penalty minutes in one go. Penalty shot coming. Paul Fitzgerald. Fitzy. Shoebottom just chucked his swing at him. His dead one on and knocks the puck to the corner. And Shoebottom signaling oh the field goal is no good. That's awesome. Middleton threw a glove, shoe bottom through his twig. <laughs> they threw a javelin throw right there. That's javelin right there. Good distance there. I wouldn't even be mad. That, that was impressive. That reminded me of the time when um, Tyler Sagan was doing that uh, uh, break shootout. The shootout against and, Jersey. And they threw trash at Someone him. threw a full Italian sausage with the works onto the ice. <laughs> Waste of money, I'd and say. I remember we were so mad because he had to do that shot again. And, it, and he scored the first time. If he didn't score the second time, oh. the fan who threw wasn't coming out alive. Now there's a Donnie Brook in the corner. One of the Bruins is down on the ice being held down by the ice hockey. Nifty takes it out. Trying to set something up here in the offensive zone. Oh, Shoebottom right the there on the net. penalty box. Here's Dave Shaw. His shot blocked away. Here's Rick Middleton. He's moving a little bit slow today, Matt. Tilly oh, can't oh. get through the I'm rebound. Oh, yeah! Bellstone might have tipped that one oh, in. Yeah! Dum -bum 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 -bum. There they go with the goals on. Now the Bruins tied it up, 5-5. Let's see if that turn on here. Swoop Bob right Sweeney after the with a shot going over net. What a move. Bruins with great board checking in the neutral zone. That's key number two. Board checking. But you know what's better than board checking, right? Scoring. Stone's got an empty net. He holds. He tees it up. He goes for the deflection. Does not connect. Some body surfing back here. Sweetie is down, and he was slow to get up. He's begging Garcia for a call. I think Louis Bello was the guilty party, but there's got to be no penalty call. Off of the mask of Gentili. Off the mask and completely fooling the goalie right there. Too bad it didn't go in. Broken up by the second greatest defenseman in NHL history, in my professional opinion. <laughs> Oh, the post again! Wow! Mustard on it. Billy Jeffy hit two posts, has two assists, no goal. Jeffy off the post again. Jeffy three. Has three posts today. Make He's that everywhere. Wow, no assists! Why are we yelling? Bruce Crowder on the goal for the Bruins alumni. They take a lead with 40 seconds to go in the first half. Exciting period of hockey right here. This is very invigorating. I'm Billy Jaffe. I'm staring up at the rafters saying, God, what do I have to do to score a goal? Boston Bruins love my goal, scored by number three, Two assists and three hit posts for Billy Jaffe. Jaffe wants the puck, though. You can definitely tell he wants it. 
Bork with a last second defensive poke check. Two seconds now and one. The buzzer sounds, the first half has come to an end. What an exciting period of hockey. It's six to five. The Bruins alumni up by a goal over the Hug Foundation ice huggers, guys. That was exciting. That was an exciting period of hockey right there. I love high scoring games. I love the back and forth, helter skelter feel of it. What do you feel, Isaac? I tell you, MVP of the first half, Billy Jaffe. I think he's tired of hearing about Ray Bork. <laughs> I mean, Ray Bork and, um, and, Mi and Nifty in that period didn't really do that much. Fair. Well, 6-5 at the end of the first half. We're going to step aside, take a quick break, and bring you second half action right after this. This is a big country. If everybody can help, we can change the world. We can make a difference. When we are aware, then we can help. Right now, there are 49 million Americans who are food insecure in the United States. September is Hunger Action Month, so we're raising awareness for one in six Americans who struggle with hunger. We're trying to create a movement to rally people and get them talking about the hunger issue in America. We're asking people to take spoon selfies and use the hashtag Spoon Your selfie is going to show up on that billboard. Get people more engaged and feel like they have a personal connection to the issue. <laughs> You're gonna stay there, Mom. Stop I'm the bar. Bar. The spoon is emblematic of something that you use to not only feed yourself but feed others. I'm a teacher. When students come to school and they're hungry, they they aren't able to learn. It's important to raise awareness. Kind of one of those things you take for granted. You're living your own life. Your picture's in Times Square without realizing how others are deeply impacted. They're gonna think I photoshopped it. People don't realize that one in six Americans struggle with hunger. That's your neighbors, that's your teachers, that's your friends. The first thing that we're trying to do with Hunger Action Month is spread the word of that startling and horrible fact. And once we make them aware, I think it's hard for them not to want to get involved and do something. Hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into Rockland Ice Arena for second half action, yes I said half, between the Hug Foundation Ice Huggers and the Boston Bruins alumni. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner Alex Wish. Isaac Litt had to uh, depart at halftime, but six to five, the Bruins alumni on top. It was a heck of a first half, back and forth all the way. We're going to be it. talking to... Uh, Dave Russo, he's going to be joining us in the penalty box at some point in the second half. Yep. Stay tuned for that. We also uh, talked with Billy Jaffe. He wants an interview at the end of the game. And the first thing he said about the hit post, it does not count as a shot yeah. on net. He's like, yeah, doesn't count. Doesn't count as a shot on net, so. Middleton gets his pocket so picked by Dan Lacatore, who's just staring, laughing at him. That was Dean Sylvester on it. Shoe bottom with a slash. That's not going to be called. Dumart in net for the Bruins has been phenomenal. That's his Gentili on the other side for the Ice Huggers. Phenomenal. They let five goals in. Compared to the saves he's made. Mike Motto on the ice now for the Ice Huggers. At the 
You're hearing the voice of the first female PA announcer in NHL history who is being interviewed by John Horrigan in the PA system here. Olivia Perone on the ice now for the Mike Ice Hockey Motto team. with the puck. Passes it along the blue line. Perone famously. Fitzgerald getting pulled into the. <laughs> Where's the penalty, sir? <laughs> I always thought that Jimmy did it. Bruins alumni uh, messing around with him a little bit. Tell him, hey, you belong on our bench, Everybody buddy. Everybody answer Jamie. A shoe bottom's just wreaking havoc oh, in the corner. So Olivier Perone famously engaged you at halftime of last year's game here at the Rockland Knights Arena. Was seemingly out of nowhere. Shoe bottom, messing around with Fitzgerald again. Fitzgerald looking for the puck. Oh, right in front, and uh, that knocked Doug the Smith Bruins goaltender off a little bit. Ice Huggers with some good possession right now, taken away by the Bruins. Weak shot by number 12 there. And the puck goes all the way down. Ladies, the first and game. And the Ice Huggers will Jamie set up again. Time. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you on behalf of the Foundation. Ice Huggers will get a nice little change going. Bang into the zone. A clear zone shot. Excellent oh. save by Dumart. Sticked away. <laughs> Bruins being up the play. Right in front, can't find the puck, but it's under him. Made the save. Look what I found. Dave Russo getting ready for action over here on the Ice Huggers bench. <laughs> He's ready. We're going to be talking to Dave Russo right after this next shift. Ray Bork along the blue line. Back to Bob Swoop Sweeney, his pass broken up by Cashman. Bruins recover, back to Sweeney. Saucer out to the blue line for Bork, he tees it up, oh what a oh, wow. And it's a goal on the rebound. Pat Leahy is gonna go unassisted. Seven to five, Bruins 20 minutes and 17 seconds left. Well, give the, give the goaltender a little bit of credit there, saving a, a Bork bomb. That was pretty impressive by the goaltender, but couldn't come up with that rebound. Couldn't control the puck. And now Swoop is just trash talking the Ice Huggers bench. <laughs> it's been a lot of trash talking today, Matt. Oh, oh, oh hold the right there. Hey, hey. That's where he's, he's talking, he's talking trash here. to the Ice Huggers bench again. He's talking up the Ice Huggers bench. He, he should belong in here. The penalty in here, get an interview with us. Bob Sweeney causing havoc. He's not usually the one we're watching out for. It's Bruce Shoebottom. Oh, Great oh, Borky, a little uh, hold there, a little shove. He's committed out there. Didn't know where the puck was there. Was talking to his teammate a little bit. Tell me the bomber sung and now Russo's on the ice. Russo skating a little fast. Let's see if he can do anything this shift. Featherstone looking right for the shot. Oh, what a goal! Wow. Top shelf. The goalie was attempting to flash the leather Giantilli wow. and he just didn't get it around fast enough. Great movement in the zone right there. Clean entry. Just pulled the puck with him. It was a beautiful goal. 
just that's all it's described as. Beautiful entry, beautiful goal. Beautiful. Billy Russo in. Billy Jaffe on the uh, ice. See if he can get net instead of. We had Featherstone on the rift from the high slot. So the Bruins uh, taking control now here in the second half. That halftime beer really uh, lit a fire under the Bruins. Oh yeah, it did. Jaffe, two assists, three posts hit today. Now Dave Russo with a B under his bonnet trying to get it down. It's taken by Simonetti in the Bruins end. Bruce Crowder has it broken up. Poke check by Jeff Dumart. Ice huggers recover. Well, if they're going to do anything right now, this is the shift to do it. Right in front. Oh. Crowder able to gain possession for the Bruins. John Horgan says goal and two assists for Jaffe in addition to three posts. Sixteen twenty left in the second half. Running clock. Shot sticked away by Dumar. Rebound attempt. Squirts to the far corner. Ice huggers have to tag up to prevent offsides. Is there even offsides today? <laughs> I, I really don't think so. There's one ref, normally the NHL has four on the ice. Bill Bennett's shot and a save by Jim Tilly. Oh, here there's a little, uh, little scuffle, but uh, nothing doing there. Oh, shoot on him, just bottom. crashes in the face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What are they going to come up with next? <laughs> Dumar wow. with another good Loose save. Front. Pops wow. Up. <laughs> a wraparound attempt, no good for the Ice Huggers. Bill Bennett comes the away puck. with it. And he'll circle around in uh, the defensive zone. A little risky there. There's a turnover. And a clean entry right here. here for the oh, Ice Huggers. Wow. Oh, my Undresses God. him. Completely undresses him. And the bench over here for the Ice Huggers are going be... insane. That was a nasty this is goal. This a family show. That was just pure nasty. Wow. And now Bob Sweeney coming over to the Bruins bench, not to the Ice Huggers bench, excuse me, yeah, to, give to give his props. Had to give it to him. You can't trash talk that. Brian Joyce, what a moment for him. His uh, brother Kevin passed away. His number was retired here by the Rockland Ice House uh, Ice Arena before the game, and now scoring on the Bruins alumni. Now that, that must feel good right there. Uh, any goal like that, you got to feel good about yourself. Ray Bork, right on a breakaway. I feel bad for Gene Tilly. Oh, oh the post! Wow! Five posts. Ray trying to go. He can't believe that. His face was like 
in shock. That hit the 90 degree corner between the crossbar and the left post. And look, look at him, you just can't believe it. <laughs> and Pork's just having fun out here. Wow, oh, shot loose. Jim Chili able to cut wow. it. Wow, excellent play Smith by Smith handled the puck there, and if it wasn't for his his ice hugger teams, <laughs> ice hug. Excuse me, my my English is a little off today. But if it wasn't for his his teammates right there, I think that would have been another goal. It would have been nine to six. The Bruins alumni contract undefeated coming into this game. Interesting. Well, I think they gotta they gotta protect this lead uh, because right now the the Ice Huggers are getting uh, their share of, of play. It's a two on zero here for the Bruins alumni Sweeney and Leahy. Sweeney to Leahy, Leahy dangling. It's not fair. And he puts oh, it. Oh, that's a goal. Bob wow. Sweeney just unfair. Two on zero. They were Bob toying with Sweeney. Chantilly. Bob Sweeney says, you know, good goal, but you know, mine, mine's a little bit sweeter. And Sweeney goes to collect the puck. <laughs> he brings it over to the Bruins bench and says, this is my first goal in a while. We are now joined in the box by Dave Russo. Back to the Scally Cap. Love yes. it. He's uh, lost the helmet. That's all right. you. How we doing, guys? Uh, I guess this is Hug Foundation uh, game number eight. Year number eight. How long? How many guys have you guys been here? I believe this is number three or four for me. Number three for you guys. Right. Number one for me. Number one for you. All right. So right now, to keep people up to date, right now the Hugs Foundation means help us give. Uh, started by Alex Mazanson and Lisa Mazanson, of course. This is our eighth annual, and tonight we're having a blast. We're losing to the Bruins alumni, nine to six. But uh, we just saw uh, Kevin Joyce's brother, B. Joyce, just score a phenomenal goal, and we're here tonight to uh, to honor uh, the legacy and the life of champion number 10, uh, Kevin Joyce. And uh, we've tied his number today, and uh, that's gonna be in the rafters. And uh, other than that, it's hockey, man. Hockey guys coming together. All right, so you're as tall as I am. Yes, five, six in heels. Five, six in heels. <laughs> Some of the Bruins are like six, seven, six, eight, and they're just going at you with all their force, but you're standing strong. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm a low center of gravity. I'm a little fire hydrant, and uh, and I, I've learned how to duck and get the heck out of the way when they come out. When you're short, you know to stay away. But right now, I'm about to go back on the ice right now, so hopefully we score a goal. All right, sound good, guys? Sounds good. All right, go Hug Foundation. Dave Russo in the penalty box, joining us as Bruce Crowder scored a goal. Got a little bit of penalty time right here. Russo uh, spending a little time with us here in between shifts. He's out back out there again. Oh, what a save by Dumart off the end of his glove. Under 10 minutes to go here in half number two. Billy Jaffe gets the puck back. Passes it up. Oh, that hit Crowder up in the face. Crowder got it right in the nose. He's trying to see if he's leaking. Here's Russo at the puck. Rick Middleton back on the ice for the Bruins alumni. So the, is this his eighth year as well? Is he playing for eight years? Lift hug? I believe so. Wow, okay. Middle 
Hamilton up to Ray Bork. Bork had it caught in his skates. Backhanded shot, stick saved by Gene Tilly. And it was easy. It's an old just, goal. Just let it drag right in. Literally just. I'm just saying it never crossed the plane of the goal. So we still have a 10 6 game. Do you think that's a little bit of a hot dog call? I don't know. It, it, I mean, I, obviously, we can't tell anything from here, but uh, to my vantage point, it looked like they easily scored. But if they claim they didn't cross the line, then I guess so. That's an ice hockey's goal. 10 to 7, so you're saying there's a chance. That's Bruins old goal horn. Ryan Joyce, his second of the game. Joyce! <laughs> Doug Smith says, I asked him, what has uh, Bob Sweeney been yelling at the bench all game? He says, that's all he can do is yell at us. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess he scored his first goal, so I I guess that that's else what he can do. I think he can score Speaking one goal. Swoop. And a good save by Gentilly. Five thirty-five to go in half number two. Simonetti off the face-off. His shot sticked away. That was a uh, that was a little weak shot there. Didn't really have that much on it. Bob Sweeney has deserted his team. He's over here talking to Dave Jensen and Tim Sweeney, who is the Ice Huggers guest coach today. Now Swoop's going to rejoin the action. Abandoning ship while your team is in the defensive zone. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Swoop about 15 feet offside. It's not called. It's 10 to 7. Ice Huggers trying to. Climb back into this one. Well, they have about four minutes to uh, try and work something out, but looks like the Bruins are going to score here. What a save by Giantelli flashing wow, the weather. What a he was save. down dead to right to Giantelli. That looked like a sure goal. Robbery. That looked like a sure goal. Four minutes in for the Ice Huggers to score three goals for the tie, four for the win. Featherstone with it. Tilly, uh, he's been playing really good in this oh, second go. half right here. Two huge saves. Yeah, they'll they'll keep it. it in. Over to Dan Lacator. Shots oh. away by Dumont. Golden opportunity there. They couldn't pick it up. They needed that. Now there's three minutes left to play. Don Garcia saying that was offside, but not blowing his whistle. Featherstone, excellent kick save to keep it in. Lacator 
forces him to shoot it for a corner. Sweeney with a weak pass, but it is taken over by the Ice Huggers. Here we go, it's a four on one for the Ice Huggers. Oh, you should have passed that. The cloud should have passed it. Mike. Wow. And there's a goal for the Mike Ice Motto. Huggers. Mike Motto with that goal. Motto's second goal of the game. 10-8 with two and a half minutes to go. I think you're gonna pull Giantilli here. Russo back on the ice. Billy Jaffe on the ice now. That one pops up into the ice hugger's bench. It'll be a face off in the neutral zone. Simonetti at the blue line, can't keep it in. Now Russo and Simonetti in a heated road race. Russo lost his glove. Jaffe takes it, pitches it to the far corner. Russo's playing with one glove on. But still wreaking havoc. Throwing his stick all the way around. They pull the goaltender, extra attacker on for the Ice Huggers. There's seven Ice Huggers on the bench. Russo goes to get his glove all the way down to the Bruins end. Tim Sweeney pulled the goaltender. Ray Bork with a four by six hole. Oh, he's just gonna toy with them. He does not want to score today. He just wants to mess around a little bit. You got a minute left. The Ice Huggers bench yelling shoot. Now <laughs> Rick Middleton has it picked off his uh, stick by Mike Motto. Forty seconds to go. Ten eight. Ice Huggers need two. And Middleton has it taken away by Fitzgerald. The Ice Huggers change out. There's, a, oh, there's gonna be about nine ice huggers on the ice right now. <laughs> Garcia's egging him on. Here comes the cavalry. Every ice hugger. <laughs> this is oh, awesome. Shoe bottom. Last 13 up seconds now. here. Literally every ice hugger on the oh, ice. Hands on deck. <laughs> Five seconds to go. It's 27 and, and the, then the goal back there is just turned away. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bruins. Alumni Association with a big win here. They stay undefeated, 10-8 your final score. And we're gonna take it to the ice right here. We're gonna try to interview somebody. 10-8, it was uh, about 25 ice huggers on the ice at the end of the game. Yep, that was, that was fun. That was Ryan a fun Jesus game right there. Your first star. Dean Sylvester. And the greatest line in hockey. Sky, the guys shake hands. Good game. Greatest line in hockey right here. Where everybody's shaking hands. This is great. 10 8, your final score. The number three star for the Bruins alumni, Bob Sweeney. Number two star is going to be Bruce Crowder. Glenn Featherstone, your number one star for the Bruins alumni. We're going to talk to him in just a bit. 10 8, your final score. Stay tuned for some interviews. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and keep our coverage going right after this. I daydream about my future a lot. I swear on my life, my kids will have a better childhood than I do. 
The kids that come to the library are wonderful. They are often facing really difficult situations. I'm the teen librarian. I get approximately five hours a day at the library. It's great. There's positive people. There's books. There's also computers we can play games on. My name is Emily. I live in a family with my dad, my sister, and my brother. My dad's a hard worker, but sometimes it's just not enough. We don't have a lot of food. My dad might buy food here and there, but it runs out really fast. A lot of kids out here, their parents work multiple jobs, so they're really pretty much on their own from the time school gets out until late at night. We realized that we had to do more. So from there, we were able to add in the snack time. Snack Time is a program that everyone ages 0 to 18 is able to come into every day at the library. The Snack Time is amazing. It's really healthy and it's really yummy to eat. I usually get my food from school and the library. It really helps with their behavior and it really helps them do their homework. I think eating food makes me feel a lot better so I can focus more. If I didn't have any of that, then my family would probably starve. For a lot of our kids, it's a really important part of their day, and it is for us too. When they look at you and you know that you're helping them, it's impossible not to love them. The reason why I get out of bed every morning is because I have friends and family that keep me positive, and because of this library. All right. We're with Brian Joyce. Brian, big day for you and your family. Tell us. Uh, what everything means today, thinking about your two goals and your, your brother's number being retired to the rafters here at the Rockland Ice Arena. It was tough. It was, it was a great day for our family, but we definitely were all emotional. Um, after the beginning, when they showed the banner, it was tough for me to even get going out there. So by the second period, I felt a lot better. But it was uh, definitely emotional, but it's just amazing. All these people, everyone's been so good to us. Can't thank everyone enough. So what's it like? We'll talk about your, your two goals, scoring and, and getting the opportunity to skate with guys like Ray Bork, Rick Middleton, and all of them. Yeah, it's incredible. And Ray's been so good to us since everything's happened. I can't thank them enough. Rick is great. All the guys out there, they're, um, you know, the hockey, it's, hockey just kind of brings everyone together, all like one big family. So I've really gotten to know a lot of those guys pretty well. Looking back, say we're a week from now, a month from now, years from now, what are you going to look back and remember about this day? Just that, you know, seeing Kathy and the girls out there before the game, seeing my brother's banner um, revealed. It's going, to be, it's going to be cool to come back to this rink and see it up there. All right, we're here with Billy Jaffe. Billy, you've taken in a lot of hockey over the last three days. <laughs> what brings you down to Rockland today? Uh, the Bruins alum, and uh, they had a day off. Uh, so why not fill it with a little hockey during the hockey season? So the Bruins alumni group asked me to play with them and, uh, you know, love it. The great group of guys and obviously a great foundation to come down here with the Hug Foundation. So what's it like uh, lacing them up, skating with the greats like Ray Bork, Rick Middleton, all the, the big names? You know, it's pretty neat, especially like I, I grew up in Chicago, but I grew up as a legitimate Bruins fan because my mother's side grew up in Boston, in, in Winthrop, right next to the airport. So long story short... I was a hardcore Bruins fan, despite growing up in Chicago Blackhawk County country. Uh, Bill Wirtz, the old owner of the Blackhawks, never put the home games on TV, and so I didn't watch him there. And, and the thing is, every week I used to talk to my grandmother, and I, I talked about Nifty, and I talked about Taz, and I talked about Peter McNabb, and I talked about all of them. They're my favorites. And so to be out here, to hanging out with Nifty and Ray and those guys, it's, it's, it's really cool. You know, it's, you know what's great is that I'm, I've turned 50 in a few days, and to be able to still feel like at once while a younger kid it's pretty cool i'm sure they feel the exact same way so what's it like <laughs> uh the the hockey brotherhood the camaraderie in that locker room and all the different stories of bruins teams over the years yeah the stories are great that's what makes these type of events uh, the most fun you know you're with the guys and you, you get to hear things and you get to share war stories and where you've been so you know the thing that's really cool and i've only played a couple of games now with the alum is that you come in they're very welcoming and you just start talking about hockey, and it isn't just hardcore hockey though, it's about stuff from the sides, and you learn things about you know, guys where they played and their upbringing and everything, and so you get to an opportunity to see them uh, in a different way too. And so that's, that to me is the coolest thing, and then when you get to get out on the ice and you play against people that are trying hard, but everybody has a huge smile on their face, that's cool, that's, that's the best part. 
So the last three days, you've done, what, three Hockey East games? Yeah. So you've seen it from both ends now. You've seen the youngest generation of, of hockey to some of the oldest generation of hockey. What's it like, the swing? And did you take anything you learned from the college kids over the weekend and bring it here today? Well, um, that's a good question. Did I take it? Uh, I don't know if I took anything. I just told myself to get out there and skate. So, yeah, we had Bruins on Thursday. We had two games on Friday. We had the championship Saturday. We had this Sunday. We got Bruins Monday, Tampa. I can't wait for that game, too. What do I, you know what's great about getting on the ice is that, because I don't get to do it often, you take what you're, you know, you hope the instincts take over a bit. Obviously, the legs are a little <laughs> slower. <laughs> the hands are a lot slower. But it, by touching the puck, by skating again, it helps, at least for me, remind me of certain things on the ice when I'm analyzing it. And so that's what I take from it more than anything. It's almost reverse, like getting out there than what I take to the broadcast. So, you know, you watch certain guys uh, pass the puck a certain way, how hard, how, how crisp, how, you know, exact. Uh, the, the college game is different than the pro game significantly. It, it, it's more frenetic. Uh, it's got a different vibe to it, but it's so much fun. I'll tell you what I took from the college game, too, though, over the last few days. Some amazing goaltenders. I mean, amazing goaltenders right now. And all USA-born kids, you know, whether it's uh, a Caden Primo or a Joseph Wall or a Jake Ottinger, these are all American-born kids. USA hockey goalies have been really good this generation. All right, we're here with the newest addition to the rafters at the TD Garden, yeah, Rick Middleton. Yeah. We'll start with today's game, then drift off a little bit in that direction. Yeah. So every year, last eight years, we're here at Rockland Ice Arena for the annual Hug Foundation game. This is a special one for the Bruins alumni. It's a special relationship you have with the Byzantine family, the Joyce uh, family. So talk about the relationships you built around this game and why this game is so important to the Bruins alumni. Uh, uh, Alex and Lisa, you know, formed the Hug Foundation, and uh, that's their charity, and we try to support that every year. But the game today for Kevin Joyce's family, you know, tragically died of a heart attack a few months ago. So, uh, you know, this was in his name. And, you know, we always like to support each other. Alex uh, Bizanson has always helped the alumni. Uh, he help, he's a pseudo trainer with us, goes on the road with us, and anytime we need anything, he helps us out, and, and we're always uh, ready to help him out. And this game is always a fun game, and it's always a competitive one, and uh, we have fun doing it. Always some of the, the bigger names come out for this game. You got Ray Bork, yeah. yourself, uh, Billy Jaffe this year. So talk about what the Bruins alumni means to this game and the charity that it raises? Well, I mean, we do about 30 of these a year around New England, and uh, it's really up to the charity to do all the work. They're the ones, it's about raising money, and, uh, you know, we, we just really show up. We, we give them the, the opportunity to do it. We, ha we uh, give them 500 programs. We give them the tickets. We give them the posters. We try to take care of a lot of the costs that they would have doing it. But they can sell all the advertising they want, and they can make as much money as they want. We hope they make as much money. And it takes a lot of work. Fundraising is a, is a lot of work. But uh, we did a game last night in Providence uh, for the Matt Light Foundation. They raised about $60,000 around the game. We do a game every year with the uh, Mass Down Syndrome. They do seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. So uh, it is possible, and some games don't do that uh, that much. It, it depends how much you want to work, but these guys work hard. So we can finally actually ask you this question. Mm. Now that you're in the rafters, what's it like skating with some of the other numbers up there? Uh, well, it's awesome. I mean, just going to the games and looking up and seeing it up there, it's still uh, kind of surreal to me after all this time, after 30 years. But... It was a great night. Um, I had four months to think about it after Cam called me and uh, to write my speech. And uh, my my biggest fear was forgetting to thank someone. So I'd wake up at four in the morning going, "Who am I forgetting? Who am I forgetting?" But it all came off well. They they did a nice ceremony. I uh, I wrote the speech and thanked the people I wanted to thank and. You know, I haven't even had a chance to look at it. I, I, I haven't looked at it on YouTube yet, the whole thing. And uh, I'm just saving that. I think uh, sit around the, in, the, in the living room one day with, with, as soon as I can get all my kids in one place uh, that were there that night, and we'll watch it again. So this game, Rockland, you get all these people coming out to see Rick Middleton, Ray Bork, guys like and that support the cause i mean and support the, the cause. reason there was so many here today because kevin joyce had a lot of friends in the community and he was a hockey guy and that's that's what we do 
He's gone to Canada with us. He's, he's played with the alumni. And uh, some guy, you know, people knew him better. Uh, I knew Kevin, but I, I didn't know him that close uh, uh, because uh, I live too far away to really hang out with him uh, over the years. But Alex, as you can tell, was a good friend with Kevin and his family. And uh, it's just, it's just, I'm just glad that we could do it in his name today. All right, we're here with Ray Bork. Ray, charity, big part of the Bruins Foundation. Tell us uh, what brings you down to Rockland today and uh, your involvement with the Bruins Foundation. Well, the Hug Foundation uh, had a tournament here. We're very involved uh, with uh, Alex that started this foundation, and he had a special event today for uh, a good friend that had passed uh, just before uh, Christmas. And um, so we're here uh, on his behalf and uh, his wife and his two daughters. Um, and uh, he was a special guy. So. Um, we're here today kind of celebrating that uh, he was a special guy and uh, we just have fun doing it. They raise money for great causes and uh, they do a lot of good things. So that's uh, what the, uh, the Bruins alumni uh, go around New England doing. Tell us what's it like to uh, lace them up and skate around with uh, some of the greats of all time in the brotherhood that keeps you involved uh, with the Bruins alumni and lacing them up with all those guys? Well, it's always fun to catch up with guys, you know. I mean, uh, the Bruins alumni do great things. Uh, they play, uh, you know, close to 40 games around New England. So um, I don't play all that many games um, with them. I probably play, uh, you know, a handful of games or six games with them. Um, but it's always fun to catch up. We've got a great alumni, um, you know, a lot of guys that uh, you, you had special times with, and it's always fun to uh, catch up with them. And, you know, um, and a, lot of the, a lot of the guys I'm good friends with, uh, you know, even see quite a lot. If it's not on a golf course, it's socially a little bit, a few of the guys. So, uh, and some of the other guys that you don't see as much, this is a good opportunity to catch up. You got little guys, four, five, six years old, coming up to you. Did you ever think, when you were that age, that you were going to be looked at the way you are today and and kind of idolized by young hockey players? No, you know when you know when you're young playing the game, you're just having fun and you're playing for the love of the game and just enjoying it. And uh, then when you get a certain age and things are going well, you kind of hope and think that uh, you know hopefully things happen for you. Um, and even when I, uh, you know, I started with the Bruins, you're hoping to play 10, 12 years, and that would be a nice career. And then, you know, you have the success that you have, and uh, you you can never you can never dream uh, that big uh, for me, anyways. You know, the things that I've lived throughout my career, playing 22 years, and uh, doing the things that I did, and, and playing with the players that I played with, and having the success that I did. Um, you can never uh, think that big. And then, you know, when it's all said and done and it's all over with, you look back and you, you, can, you still can't believe uh, the things that you accomplish. And, uh, but it was, a, it was a dream come true. Uh, I lived a dream. Uh, you know, I was able to play for 22 years till I was 40 years old. So um, it, was, uh, it was incredible. So, no, I, the question was asked if I could have ever thought of doing the things I did at a young age. The question is no.